heat transfer or sublimation? Which one would you choose? Today we're going to be comparing and showing these two very popular and cost-effective printing methods and I'm going to be doing both of them using just one machine. This is Recoma's Luminaris 200 white toner transfer printer, one of the most versatile transfer printers on the market. It prints on plain copy paper, white transfer toner paper, and sublimation paper. Honestly, a full powerhouse and a game changer for any business owner or customization lover. We're gonna go over the steps of both methods and which method is best for your business. So without further ado, roll the intro. First, let's start with a quick overview of what heat transfer and sublimation printing are. Heat transfer printing, also known as two-step heat transfer printing, is a two-step method where you print a design onto a transfer paper. Using a heat press, you then transfer the printed design onto an adhesive paper in a process known as marrying. After marrying your adhesive and transfer sheet, you can then transfer the design onto any garment or fabric using your heat press. During sublimation printing, specially formulated toner is heated until it turns into a gaseous liquid that transfers from a piece of paper onto a polyester garment or poly-coated surface. The toner then cools and resolidifies, effectively becoming part of whatever you transfer your design onto. Sublimation is the only printing method that forms a permanent bond between the toner and your substrate. As such, it lasts longer than any other printing method and produces a more seamless finished garment. Now that we've covered what heat transfer and sublimation printing are, let's start with our heat transfer printing demo. All right, we're gonna open up our VividRip software. We're already on the Luminaris 200 and we're gonna be on the CMYW tab right here. We're gonna open up our design. So we're gonna go over to our desktop and we're gonna go to the Everglades Fishing. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fit the page. And now I'm gonna bring it down to nine inches in height, right there, so seven by nine. On our Q tab, we're gonna make sure that the page size is the A4 paper, so 8.2 by 11.7. We have standard two-step selected. We're gonna be in tray one. And the paper type that we use, that's it's a glossy type of paper, is gonna be the thick to 105 grams. Now we're gonna go over to our job tab and we're gonna click on color adjust. Let's bring our brightness to 10 and let's do five on saturation, hit okay. And once that's done, all you do is you go over to the printer and you hit print and it'll begin the spool. Before we're ready to print, let's load our printer. All right, so we're gonna use our A transfer paper now and put it onto the printer. So it's gonna be shiny side down and matte side up. All right, so we're gonna load it into the paper here. And we're gonna make sure that the selector here is on the A4 paper. So now push down and there you go. All right, so I have my A transfer paper and my B transfer paper. The A transfer paper, the design is gonna go facing down and then the B paper, the adhesive is right here. The easiest way to figure it out is the writing will go facing up. So we're gonna go B paper over A paper. And then what I'll do to make it easier for me to peel is I'm gonna make a little fold right here on the corner at about like a 45 degree angle. That way it's easier for me to peel. Otherwise it's super hot and you're gonna burn yourself. All right, so now I'm gonna put my Teflon sheet over, push the platen in, and it's 310 degrees for 120 seconds. I'm gonna pull out the platen and then I'm gonna use a white shirt to rub the design. I'll give it a couple of seconds. And then after that, I'm gonna use the shirt as a heat shield so I don't burn my hands. And I'm gonna peel the design in one swift motion. Okay. So my A and B paper have been married. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the excess residue on the corner so that it doesn't transfer onto my shirt when I press it. All right, make sure to always press your shirt to get out any wrinkles or moisture. So 310 degrees, 10 seconds, and let's press. Let's go ahead and grab our design. Do the four finger technique from the collar to the design, and let's place our Teflon sheet over and 310 degrees for 30 seconds. Okay. Now this is a cold peel, so I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll peel it. Now we're gonna go ahead and seal it. 
And this is gonna be 310 degrees for 20 seconds. All right, and there we go. Our design is officially sealed. Now let's jump into our sublimation demo. This time in Vivid Rip, we're gonna select the CMYK tab instead of CMYW. To upload and resize our design, it will be the same steps we did for heat transfer. The key difference is that this time we will mirror the design so that when we transfer it, it's pointing in the correct direction. Now we're gonna ensure that our page size right here, 8.5 by 11 inch lettering, we're gonna do our tray number one as our input tray. And lastly, paper type is plain. Now let's go over to our job tab, click on color adjust, and we'll choose the same edits as before. So 10 for brightness and five for saturation. I'm gonna click okay, and there we go. Typically to do sublimation, you would need to invest in another printer and additional software. But the beauty of the Luminaris 200 is that to do sublimation, all you need to do is to switch out to cartridges. These sublimation cartridges are specially designed to be compatible with the Luminaris 200 white toner transfer printer, and they're linked in the description below. Now, let me show you how easy it is to change out the cartridges. We're gonna open up our printer, remove the CMYK toner cartridges, and replace them with the sublimation dye toner. Once all four cartridges are changed, we're gonna close it. All we have left is to load our printer with regular printer paper. We're gonna make sure that the end cap is on the slot for paper. So we're gonna take this tab and bring it down one, and we're gonna load the tray. All right, now that we have our printer set up for sublimation, it's time to click print. All right, so I'm over here now with my Recoma Auto Open 60 by 20 heat press, and I've already got my temperature set up at 385 degrees Fahrenheit, and I have the timer set for five seconds. This is gonna be so that I can get the wrinkles out of my shirt and the moisture. After that, I'm gonna change it to 50 seconds, and that's where I'm gonna do my sublimation. I've got both my Teflon sheets ready to go. One of them, I've folded it. I'm gonna put it in between the shirt, and the reason for that is if I use the print method without this in the middle, the toner is gonna bleed through the shirt. So you wanna prevent that. Now I have my design. I'll place it just like we do with any other printing projects. Four fingers from the collar, okay. And then we'll grab our regular Teflon sheet, place it on top, and we're ready to press. And there we have it. Now let's discuss what to consider when choosing between sublimation and heat transfer printing. Regarding durability and feel, a heat transfer printed design can last about 30 to 40 washes depending on the size of the design and how it's washed. You'll also feel the difference between the design and the fabric. With sublimation printing, the ink fuses into the fabric so it's more permanent. Most sublimated designs will last as long as the actual fabric. One of the key differences is gonna be the garments that you can print on. This is because sublimation printing can only adhere to polyester coated materials. The substrates that you can use are either white or very light colored garments. On the other hand, with heat transfer printing, you can use light or dark colored garments and you can use it just about any substrate like polyester blends or cotton blends. Ultimately, which method you choose depends on the customer and what type of material they want to use to print on. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed today's episode and you want to learn more about sublimation printing, I actually did an episode about it recently, and I'm going to leave it in the comments section below so I can help you level up your printing game. If you're looking for more inspiration for your next printing project or to get some more printing advice, then be sure to check us out on Facebook and join our embroidery and printing business help group. If you haven't done so already, then be sure to check us out on Instagram and TikTok for informative and entertaining content. And if you have any ideas you'd like to see in a future episode of Recoma Prints, be sure to leave it in the comments section below. Best of luck, and I'll see you in the next one.